across the ages many deadly beasts roamed on our planet and in our waters, but sooner or later they all became extinct. So today I want to use this video to show you these deadly beasts, why they were the apex predators and how they died off. And we can start in the Pleistocene era, where a beast known as the Smilodon was wreaking havoc in its ecosystem by effortlessly killing everything in its path with its humongous curved teeth, which also gave them the name of the Sabertooth. Now these teeth allowed them to bite deep into the necks of their enemies, with a staggering size of 18 centimeters. That's literally 7 inches which is quite a good size if you know what I mean. So if these teeth were used correctly, they could effortlessly kill creatures even 5 times their size, but that alone didn't make them the apex predator of the respectable region, because they had a far more robust build in their front limbs which allowed them to climb on massive creatures that they most likely took on with packs of a few extra Smilodons. In simple words, they had quite a lot of similarities with our modern big cats, but sadly, unlike them, they were wiped out from the face of our planet nearly 10,000 years ago. This came down to two possible factors. The first one was the end of the Ice Age, which caused many of its food sources to die off. And the second one came to us humans, because we viciously and relentlessly hunted them down, since we saw them as a giant threat. But the same cannot be said about the mighty Megalodon, because if we humans tried to take on that mighty beast, we would get absolutely demolished. It was one of the largest predators this world has ever seen, growing up to whopping 20 meters in length. To put that into perspective, this thing is twice as long as a school bus. With that kind of size, nothing stood in their way, and anything they could get in their massive jaws ended up suffering the same fate. This happened because they had a strong bite force of 180 kilonewtons, which could allow them to jump through any whale, flesh, and bone. If we compare its bite force to a hydraulic press, it would be able to squash two cars like nothing. But it wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for its massive and sharp teeth, which could grow up to a staggering 18 centimeters big. Now these teeth can sometimes even be found on the ocean floor as fossilized remains. And if you're lucky and coincidentally stumble onto one, you can sell them for quite a little bit of money. Now you might be asking yourself if that creature was so immensely powerful, just how the hell did it become extinct? Well, the most likely case was they were just too good. They killed everything in their ecosystem, and in the end there was nothing left to feed their humongous and relentless bodies. Anyway, if we're already talking about sharks, I might as well mention one of the weirdest sharks ever, a shark that has baffled scientists for many years. It's the helicoprine shark, with its one-of-a-kind saw-like mouth from hell. In all honesty, scientists still don't fully know how it worked, but they first speculated that their mouths looked like this. But then one node was like, no, no, that sounds way too dumb. So now they think the teeth came from inside its mouth, or more specifically, its lower jaw, where is they literally slice their prey in half, rendering them immobile in mere seconds. Despite that, not much else is known about them, because they literally lived 250 million years ago, and it became extinct in the Permian Triassic mass extinction event, where literally almost all life on our planet was wiped out of existence. Now the helicoprine was certainly quite a formidable shark, but it was nothing compared to the Mosasaurus, because in all honesty, coming face to face with this thing would result in immediate death. Now they were around 50 meters long, so they weren't as huge as the Mosasaurus in the Jurassic World movie, but they were still cold blooded killing machines. This came down to their pedal like limbs, which gave them increased agility, and it also made them highly adaptable to different environments, which furthermore aided in the evolution of multiple different Mosasaurus species across the oceans and fresh waters of the world. Now, this apex predator ate anything it could get its teeth on turtles, fish, sharks, heck, they even resulted to cannibalism. So, as long as you were smaller than it, you were most probably fucked. 
Anyway, this absolute monstrosity died off because of something called a giant flipping rock hitting the surface of the planet and 70,000 kilometers an hour, which either instantly vaporized them or it killed all of its prey, leaving them to die off with starvation. Anyway, another extremely successful reptile was the Sakasukus. Okay, am I reading that right, bro? What the hell? But that, that's such a weird flipping name. So yes, it was a giant crocodile sizing around 10 meters in length. And with that massive size, it destroyed every foe in freshwater areas of North Africa. It did so with its massive jaw, which gave it the ability of making a bite force of a whopping 90 kilonewtons. That's half of what the Megalodon was capable of, and the Sakasukas is literally five times or even more smaller than it. Now, if we couple that with its extremely sharp teeth, and well, um, you get a lean, mean, killing machine. In simple words, they were quite similar to our modern crocodiles and alligators and such, but they had one key difference. You know, they were five times bigger, and also, they had far longer limbs which made them far more agile and be capable of catching prey on land far easier. But on the other hand, in the same environment, there was even a deadlier species, known as the Spinosaurus. They grew up to 18 meters long, and they were comprised of a long crocodile-like snout and also a weird spine, which was most likely used for thermal regulation. Now, when this beast was hunting in its natural habitat in the freshwater lakes, it dominated absolutely everything. It was fast, agile, huge, strong, relentless, absolutely nothing stood in its way, and even on land it was a formidable foe. Its sheer size and power helped it deal with other apex predators. But thankfully this behemoth did die out, because if I saw that I would most definitely piss my pants. Basically the swamps where the Spinosaurus hunted in were filled with ocean water because of the rising sea level. And with it, it brought a lot of predators accustomed to that kind of environment and they stole all of its prey. But you know what, we've been talking about dinosaurs for almost the whole time now, so let's go more into present times, let's say, approximately 10,000 years ago. Over here, a beast known as the Dire Wolf wreaked havoc on its prey. It was just a little bit smaller than the Sabertooth, clocking in around 1 meter in height and 2 meters in length. But you see, this creature did need immense size to be on top of the food chain, because they lived in packs similar to modern wolves. This allowed them to hunt prey far larger than them, such as ground sloths, bison, or even mammoths. If we look at the proportion to their size and the bite force they created, they far exceeded almost anything on this planet, even the saber tooth. So you know, uh, if it got you in your jaws, there was absolutely no escaping. Now, in this era, we also have the Andrew Sarkis, and it might have just been one of the largest carnivore mammals of all time. It somewhat resembled a hog, and it had powerful jaws. Although we don't really know much about their diet, since there aren't a lot of fossilized remains of them. But we do know one thing, they lived in Central Asia, or now known as Mongolia. And lastly, let's cover the creepiest thing up until now, the Titana Boa. This thing is a giant snake and it's literally something out of my nightmares. It was 12 meters long and it could swallow you whole within a second. But within the jungle swamps, it even hunted for crocodiles. It wrapped itself around its prey and crushed it with its overwhelming force, rendering the poor animal incapacitated, squashing their literal bones together until eventually it suffocated. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching.